Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship from First United Methodist Church of Glendale. This morning, we welcome Larry Del Rey and Judy Polhouse as our music leaders. We welcome Christine and Will Jones with help from Reverend Tom Wick as our friends behind the camera and the sound. And I'm Pastor Tom Jelinek. We welcome you to this time to come together and worship our Lord together. And this morning as we begin, I welcome Larry Del Rey to join us in introducing our first hymn. Good morning, everyone. Our first hymn this morning is going to be God whose love is reigning o'er us. God whose love is reigning o'er us, source of all the ending true. Hear the universal chorus raised in joyful praise to you. Alleluia, alleluia, worship ancient, worship new. Covenant, open in Jesus, star child born to set us free, set to heal us, sent to teach us how love's children we might be. Alleluia, alleluia, Risen Christ, our Savior, He. Lift within our human voices In the songs that faith we bring. Live within in human choices Lives that like our music sing. Alleluia, Alleluia, joined in love, our praises ring. And let us join in a time of prayer together this morning. God of grace and love, as the crowds followed Jesus, eager to be filled with hope, we come this day to this place, seeking nourishment for our souls. We hunger and thirst for the word of hope and truth, but our world seems to be saturated by anger and hostility. Our hearts are filled with concerns for family and friends, for our country and our world. We want to help others, but we don't see how we can. Sit us down as Jesus seated the multitude. Calm us down as Jesus reassured the disciples that all would receive care. Lift us up as Jesus encouraged others to reach out in compassion. Give us hearts of confident faith in your presence, O God, and place your healing hands on the many situations which we name at this time with our voices and in our hearts. Lord, we ask your merciful goodness for these situations and these loved ones. We ask for your guidance, for your healing and inspiration. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
The scripture this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. In this passage, Jesus has just learned that his cousin, John the Baptist, has been killed in prison under orders of King Herod. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. A number of years ago, I arrived at a new church appointment in a car with no front bumper. The reason was, a little while before I arrived there, I was coming out of a camp in southeastern Arizona at night, and suddenly in the road in front of me, there was a large group of javelinas or peccaries, wild pigs that live in the southwestern deserts. They're attracted by motion, but their vision isn't very good at best, and at night, it's even worse. They must have been drawn to the moving lights of the car, and by the time I saw them, I couldn't avoid hitting two of them, one on each side of the front bumper. Now, the bumper was essentially plastic, so after the impact, parts of it were scraping along the ground. So I tied them up as best I could with shoelaces and wire. When I had the car serviced a short time later, the shop suggested that they remove the bumper altogether until a new one could be ordered and installed to avoid further damage from pieces scraping or breaking off. So I called the insurance company, the body shop, and so on. And when that kind of thing happens, it's easy to feel frustrated and how much time it can take, and what a distraction it can be and disruptions in, the, in our schedules. And even with insurance, it's frustrating how much these things can cost. The Havelinas, for some reason, were not insured. Then one day, I came back to the office at that church and saw the bicycles of the homeless who were waiting for a meal and a respite from the summer heat that that church provided several times a week. I suddenly thought, what if I didn't have insurance and the car was a total loss? What if I didn't have a car at all and had no means of getting one? What if I had to ride a bus, or what if I had to walk to work if I couldn't afford the fare? What if I didn't have a job at all? What if I had no idea where my next meal would be or where it was coming from? Once again, 
God gave me perspective. I learned a lesson in humility. I understood how trivial my temporary inconveniences were and realized how blessed I was and how I was not living in a mode of scarcity, of time and resources, but rather I was living a life of great abundance thanks to God. The reading we heard from the Gospel of Matthew this morning is one that naysayers love to point to when they argue that some things described in the Bible couldn't possibly be true. But when they focus only on the miraculous aspect of the story and make a case for the physical impracticality of feeding 5,000 people with two loaves and five or with two fish and five loaves, I think they're missing the real point. And to get a better understanding, I think we need to take a couple of steps back and look at the greater context of what was happening. In the verses before this morning's passage, the murder of John the Baptist is described. We hear how when Jesus learned of John's death from John's disciples, he got in a boat and went to a deserted location to be alone. This is understandable as John was Jesus' first cousin, very close to him in age. And, and John's ministry of baptizing his followers proceeded and prepared the way for Jesus' own ministry. But the scripture records that many people traveled on foot from nearby towns, so when Jesus went ashore, there was a great crowd already there to meet him. He saw that many needed healing, so even though he had sought a time alone, he cured them, and by that time, it was getting late. Jesus' disciples were concerned that the people there were in a deserted place and there was no food. So they suggested Jesus tell them to go into the villages and buy food. But Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. It was soon discovered that all they had was two fish and five loaves. Jesus blessed the food, gave it to the crowd, and somehow those two baskets fed thousands of people, and there were 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish to spare. Aside from the miraculous nature of what happened, there are several things that stand out. First, even while he was grieving for his murdered cousin. Jesus attended to the needs of those around him. He saw that those in the crowd had physical needs that needed healing. So rather than teach them right away, he healed them, showing grace and mercy. And again, as the day drew to a close, he made sure that their physical needs were met by giving them food that they might not have been able to get anywhere else. Second, Jesus and his disciples operated in a mode of abundance. They didn't seek to protect what little they had. Instead, they trusted God and willingly offered what they had to the crowd, even though they realized it couldn't possibly be enough. They could have easily approached the situation in a mode of scarcity and said, oh, we've got to hide these loaves and fish. If all these hungry people know we have them, then there'll be a riot and we'll be trampled. Instead, the disciples trusted God and Jesus, and what little they had turned out to be not only more than enough for the crowd, but way more than they had to begin with after the crowd was fed. Our community 
has, and likely will, experience a substantial impact from the health and economic effects of the current pandemic. Healthcare, employment opportunities, schools, public services, and especially vulnerable populations of all ages have been and are experiencing times of trial. There's no doubt that many of us are and will experience some challenging times in this unprecedented era. And yet, even under present conditions, we're living in a state of blessing that many throughout the world cannot even imagine, and that but for the grace of God, it could be us in the deserts of Africa, in the battlegrounds of the Middle East, or on the streets of Calcutta. And our Christian tradition calls us to be advocates for the most vulnerable, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to know that whatever we do or don't do to help the least of these, we do to our Savior. And finally, in this part of the body of Christ, known as Glendale First United Methodist, as we look at the needs of our congregation and its ministries, we could think that we're living in a time of scarcity. Yet, there are so many reasons to have hope on the horizon. We have the opportunity to welcome new members of this church family that we haven't even met yet, and to put into place new ministries that we haven't even thought of yet to build this family, this part of the body of Christ. Friends, we have the opportunity to move from scarcity to abundance. We can stand on the foundations of our faith and be advocates for the most vulnerable. And with the courage of the disciples, we can remember the words of our Savior, bring me what you have and watch as what we have, no more, no less, meets the need of those around us and brings back even more baskets overflowing with blessing. We have the opportunity to be those disciples in this place and this time. Please pray with me. God of abundance and grace, you are present to us and with us as we wrestle with situations which seem to drain us, as we search for the path forward, you reach out to us with reassurance of empowerment and courage for the days ahead. Calm our spirits, heal us, and prepare our hearts and lives to receive your awesome grace. Thanks be to God, and all of God's people of abundance said, Amen. And now this morning we have a time once again to share, share our gifts, our tithes and our offerings with our church family. As you'll note on the screen in front of you, you will see the ways and opportunities we have to share those gifts. And we are so grateful, so grateful for the way in which those in this congregation have continued to support and encourage our church family with our gifts in this time of separation. Let us pray together this morning as we share 
in our tithes, gifts, and offerings. God of grace and hope, we give you thanks for the abundance in our lives. We thank you for this opportunity to share these gifts and ask that you will bless them, that they will be a blessing to our ministries and to the ministries throughout the world that our denominational family supports. We lift up these gifts to you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as we approach communion, let us sing together our communion hymn, I Come With Joy. I come with joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, in awe and wonder to recall his life will lay on for me, his life laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find in all are fed the new community of love is Christ's communion bread. It's Christ's communion bread. I gather it, we gather bound, we'll go our different ways. And as us people in the world, we'll live and speak his praise. We'll live and speak his praise. Once again, we gather at this table that our Lord has set for us. This is an open table. All who trust in Christ are welcome to come and receive in these elements. You do not need to be a member of this church, the United Methodist Church, or any church to receive this blessing which our Lord gives to us. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us now turn to the great thanksgiving, which you will find the words, the responses, on the screen and let us join in this together the lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give our thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you almighty god creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to our church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup 
Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final, final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we have gathered in our homes, if we have elements, bread and juice available to us, let us share in these elements together. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. And now let us share in a prayer of thanksgiving for the gift of these elements, this sacrament. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now is our closing hymn. We will sing, My Life is in You, Lord. It's a popular hymn that we have sung many times when we have been able to be together. So I hope that you will join us from home in singing this now. My Life is in You, Lord. My Life
And now, let us go forth. Go forth in peace. And may the love of God, the fellowship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all in abundance. Now and evermore, go in peace. Amen.